Shalom, and welcome to another edition of Q&A with Pastor Scott Villane, where we try to answer your biblical questions in 10 minutes or less. I'm Pastor Scott Villane with Holy Impact Ministries, and our selected question of the day is, does God have a name? If we're talking about the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you can rest assured that God does indeed have a name. In fact, it may surprise many of you to know that our Father in Heaven wrote His name in His God-breathed Scripture 6,521 times in what we know as the Old Testament. To be honest with you, it should boggle the mind to know and to understand that we know all of the names of the Bible's pagan little g-gods. We hear about the pagan little g-god Tammuz in Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. We hear about the pagan little g-god Moloch in Acts chapter 7, verse 43. We hear about the pagan little g-god Zeus in Acts chapter 14, verse 12. We hear about the little g-goddess Ashtaroth in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 5. We hear about the little g-god Baal in over 90 different verses in both the Old and the New Testaments. So, how is it that we don't know the name of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The first thing that we need to understand is that the word God is in office. It's not a name. God's name is not God. The second thing that we need to understand is that there are many gods that can be found in the Bible. The divine counsel of our Father in heaven, we're all called gods. Consider Psalms chapter 82. Let's go over here to Eastward. Again, Psalms chapter 82 says this, God has taken his, div- his place in the divine counsel. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. Sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, like men you shall die, and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. The word God comes from the original Hebrew word Elohim, and this is very important for us to understand. Again, it is the original Hebrew word Elohim, and there are many Elohim that can be found within the pages of our Bibles. Not only were the divine counsel of our Father in heaven called gods, but Moses was also called a god, or Elohim, in Exodus chapter 4, verse 16. And in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, our Father in heaven tells us that he made Moses a god to Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, And Yahovah said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, we find our Father in heaven also calling his only begotten Son a god. Again, the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, says this, For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my Son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprighteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. And so you see that our Father's divine counsel were all called Elohim, also known as gods. Moses was called an Elohim, also known as a god. Our Father in heaven even calls his only begotten Son an Elohim, also known as a god. And so once again, the word god simply is a title, my friends. Just as I am a father, I'm a pastor, I'm a photographer, I'm a musician, these are all titles, but they're not my name. So where does our Father in heaven tell us over 6,500 times what his name is? Let's turn to Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. Again, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 3 here very quickly. 
13 through 15. It says this, Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is your name? What shall I say to them? And this is Moses asking our father, What shall I say to them? Who shall I say sent me? It continues, God says to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahovah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Clearly, our Father in heaven tells us what his name is. I am who I am. And if we look closely at Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, you can see the word Lord in capital letters. Why did they capitalize the, the word Lord in our English translated Bibles? They capitalized the word Lord because it is a blooper in our English translated Bibles. Our father is not a 16th century British landowner. If you take the time to go to the King James numbered version of your Bible and check the original Hebrew word that has been translated into the English word Lord, you will find the very name of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And very quickly, I would like to do that. Let me go over here to Exodus here uh, very quickly, and I'm going to take you over to Eastward. Let's go back to Eastward, and we're going to go to Exodus here, chapter 3. Verse 15, and I just want you to see this here very quickly when we talk about the Lord. Exodus 3, 15. We're going to go to the Lord here. Now, we're going to, I want to know what this original uh, Hebrew word is. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on Exodus 3, 15. I'm going to go over to the King James numbered version of the Bible. Right here, we can find that it is Strong's H3068. I'm going to double click on that. We're going to do a little investigative work here. What do we see? Again, here, according to Brown Driver Briggs' Hebrew definition, the word Lord is Yahovah, the proper name of the one true God. And if we look at Strong's, it tells us the same thing. I'll go over here to the Strong's uh, uh, lexicon, and it says the same thing. And the occurrences, how many occurrences are there of this? 6,521. So, once again, my friends, according to Brown Driver Briggs and Strong's Hebrew definitions, the word Lord does not belong in your Bible. It covers up the very name of the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Yahovah. And I would remind you, my friends, that our Father in heaven tells us right here in Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, that this is his name, and I quote, forever. And he also tells us in Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, that his name is to be remembered throughout our generations. Whose generations? All of our generations. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 through 29. And let's go over to Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 through 29. For as many of you as were baptized into the Messiah have put on the Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. And again, the Greek is a Gentile. So there's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither slave nor free. There's not even a male and a female, for you are all one in the Messiah Yeshua. And if, and that is a mighty big word there, my friends, if you are the Messiahs, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And you can also read Romans chapter 11 for more information on this. My friends, we do not need any pastor, priest, bishop, or pope to tell us the name of our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven wrote his name over 6,500 times in his God-breathed scripture. Our God is not a God of confusion. And I would submit to you, my friends, that this is a shame for a modern-day Christian to not know the name of their Father in heaven. And so, I would like to personally thank you for allowing me to take that shame away from you and to replace it with the truth of Yahovah, the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now. Go read your Bible, and please, my friends, read it from the beginning to the end and not from the middle to the end. You'll be glad you did. I'm Pastor Scott Villain with Holy Impact Ministries. Shalom, everyone.